the good thing here is that worldwide the share of new capacity additions for fossil based power plants have decreased significantly so while in 2011 uh, the fossil based uh, power plant new fossil based power plants made up of 60 percent of the capacity additions whereas renewable power plants made up of 40 percent in 2021 this share has reversed so that there is around 70 to 80 percent of new installed capacities coming from renewable sources solar wind hydro etc and only 20 percent is coming from new fossil fuel based sources so what this shows is new power plants are traditionally all coming up as solar wind hydro etc and new gas power plants or new coal power plants are no longer being sustained by the government okay however uh, you must understand this is itself not enough many of the older coal power plants have to be phased out before their lifetime gets over in order to reach the targets that we need okay so we will see whether that is feasible or not in much later in the class we, we where we may have time to discuss some policy aspects of this as well so we saw this uh, renewable energy being generated the generation rates uh, the capacity addition rates have been growing worldwide which countries are leading this sector the largest capacity additions uh, in 2018 so this is 2018 data so total worldwide renewable capacity additions was 1246 gigawatts okay out of which the largest contributor was china with 404 gigawatts the second largest was european union as a whole so european union contains a lot of countries so as a whole it was 339 megawatt uh, gigawatts in european union okay after that the third place i would say is india so germany is of course a part of uh, sorry the third place is united states around 180 gigawatts okay and then uh, it is india at 78 gigawatts germany is of course a part of eu, EU so i am not talking about that so in 2018 india was the fourth largest in terms of the renewable capacity additions worldwide and this position has only strengthened in the last uh, two three years so india has been aggressively pursuing new renewable uh, electricity generation capacities and is now a significant contributor to the global capacity additions in renewable power sector japan is also a significant contributor so is uk which is not part of eu so this is kind of the details in 2021 data where uh, where the relative status of the various countries are so india has reached number three in solar uh, capacity additions in wind power capacity additions so the number one position is all in china so china has been aggressively installing renewable energy systems uh, in it so it always keeps the number one spot in most of the sectors followed by a mixture of united states uh, canada etc for example india is number three again in hydropower capacity addition and number two in solar water heating capacity additions okay so in all these sectors india certainly ha is one of the leading areas where renewable technology is being deployed at a large enough scale okay. so why has uh, renewable energy uh, capacity additions picked up over the last 10 years okay so the reason is the rapid decline in costs okay so this is what is called the levelized cost of electricity generation lcoe okay what this means is what is the cost of generating one kilowatt hour of electrical energy okay this cost includes the capital cost of all the equipments the capital cost of land purchase the capital cost of uh, the entire infrastructure for distribution of that energy okay so that entire capital cost plus the running cost the running cost is estimated assuming say the power uh, plant solar farm say has 30 40 years of life before the equipment uh, basically the solar cells wear out etc okay so over that time what is the total running cost in terms of men personnel change of spares consumables etc that is the running cost 
plus the initial capital investment cost that is the total cost that that is uh, required to build and maintain this solar power plant solar farm for the next 30 years and now we can estimate based on uh, the location how much electricity that solar farm is likely to generate over the next 30 years based on its capacity factor etc etc so that then the levelized cost of electricity is the total cost of installing and running the plant for 30 years divided by the total amount of electricity electrical energy in kilowatt hours that this uh, plant is going to send to the grid so that becomes the dollar per kilowatt hour metric that is in the y axis okay in the x axis we are comparing different energy sources and what their how the levelized cost of electricity has changed between 2010 and 2020 so between the last decade between 2010 technology and 2020 technology all right so you see the fossil fuel cost range. so this is the cost range clearly for example coal cost uh, is cheaper somewhere natural gas is cheaper somewhere so there is always a range in each of these technologies right uh, some places uh, wind blows much more aggressively so wind turbines is cheaper because you are getting more electricity out of it in the 30 year over over another place which is relatively calm okay so there will always be a range and kind of a median value okay so the median value for fossil fuels is 0.076 dollars per kilowatt hour so basically 0.076 dollars is spent to generate one kilowatt hour of electricity and this has not changed over the last 10 years reason fossil fuel technology is extremely mature there isn't a lot that you can do to decrease its cost okay geothermal the cost has actually increased uh, this is actually not a very good estimate primarily because uh, what this actually means is uh, uh, easy to tap sources of geothermal heating is not there so you have to invest mo more uh, uh, invest more to get to the deeper geothermal resource so we will discuss this and hence the cost increase has happened okay. hydro you can see here that hydro is already lower than fossil fuels okay so fossil fuels is 0 0.076 dollars hydro was 0 0.038 dollars in 2010 now it's 0 0.044 dollars so somewhat slight increase in the cost okay because of location issues uh, uh, etc uh, some of the easier hydropower sources have kind of been already tapped but you see why hydro has been one of the most established renewable energy technologies for a long period because in proper locations the cost of generating electricity from hydro is actually lower than the cost of generating electricity from coal or natural gas okay. but let us look at the modern renewables this is solar photovoltaics in 2010 the cost of generating one kilowatt hour of electricity from solar photovoltaics was 0 0.381 so if you look here versus here it is like 50 times the cost of generating one kilowatt hour from fossil fuels that was the difference okay uh, not 50 five times okay five times the difference okay so you 0 0.076 into 5 we will get around 0 0.381 so the cost of generating electricity was five times costlier for solar pv than for fossil fuels in 2010 but today that cost has decreased to 0 0.057 so in 10 years the cost has dropped by over six times okay and this drop has made solar pv electricity cheaper than fossil fuel electricity in today's world and that is why you are seeing this rapid replacement of new power generation sources from fossil fuel based to solar pv based because economically it is now making far more sense to do this for a uh, uh, electricity generation company than in 2010 and this is because the technology and the cost effectiveness have matured technology have matured the cost effectiveness has hence dropped very uh, has become very much there in the last 10 years this dramatic change has happened similarly there is another technology called concentrating solar power okay 
This too has dropped from 0.34 dollars to 0.108 dollars. Not as much as solar PV, but within the fossil fuel range as well. Okay. So this too has become viable when competing with fossil fuel based energy sources. Offshore wind 0.162. It was close to this fossil fuel range in 2010. It has declined modestly to become lower than the uh, reasonably same as the fossil fuel range of 0 0.084. So again, offshore wind is competing aggressively with fossil fuel change. Onshore wind was already lower in 2010 compared to fossil uh, uh, close to the fossil fuel range in 2010. So we will see that before 2010 there was a lot of wind turbine installations. After 2010, a lot of solar cell in installations. The reason is. Of course, wind turbine has also decreased in cost to 0 0.039. Okay, so it also has become significantly cheaper. So today, at least, wind turbine based power is the cheapest variant of power followed by solar, solar and geothermal. So hydro remains still the cheapest after onshore wind. But remember, hydro wind are more location specific, whereas solar is more universal. Sun is basically available almost every place of the world. Whereas windy places are harder to find, good water sources are harder to find. So there is a natural advantage of solar in its availability that makes it a very attractive option now, now that its costs have decreased below the fossil fuel range. And this is the biggest reason why this transition has happened. So this is kind of that information itself, the levelized cost of electricity generation, how that has changed over the last uh, uh, period. This also shows the capacity factor values uh, in 2020. So the capacity factor for bioenergy is 70%, so 0.7 basically. Geothermal is 83%. Hydropower is 46%. So basically what it means is it's running at, at its full capacity, approximately 46% of the total time period in the year. Solar PV capacity factor is just 16%. So you can see the large, uh, the, the huge amount of time the solar PV is not actually generating power at its maximum possible capacity. It's not only less than 15%, it's very, very, very less than 15%. Okay. So this needs to also be taken into account when we are thinking of solar PV. CSP 42%, so close to hydro again, concentrated, this is concentrated solar power. We will discuss this later as we discuss. All of these things we will discuss, hopefully geothermal as well if time permits, we will see. Onshore, onshore wind 36%, so here we see a significant increase in the capacity. Okay. So for example, concentrated solar factor, the capacity factor is increased by 40%, onshore wind increased by 31%. Solar PV has also increased to, uh, to a modest degree. It looks big, but it's just 2% uh, increase in actual values. Similarly, offshore wind is around 40%. Okay. And the total installed costs have dropped significantly for this solar PV, CSP, onshore wind and offshore wind, etc. Okay. So the material costs, the design uh, uh, improvements have made them cheaper to install. So that is one of the major reasons why their levelized cost of electricity has declined so significantly. So this is kind of the snapshot of where we are and why uh, at least in the electricity generation the future looks quite good. We will discuss uh, the other sectors later. These are often called hard to abate sectors where uh, transition to renewables is harder. We will see what we can do about that in the later sections of the class. But from now on over the next few classes at least we will discuss these sources of electricity, hydropower, solar photovoltaics, concentrated solar, onshore and offshore wind. And we will see where we are in each of these cases. So with that, I will stop this lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss hydropower. Thank you.